up your YouTube, search for Stupid Meadows, watch on your big screen. Or another device if you're at home. Get yourself comfy, this could take a while. What a happy scene. Something new every day for your long term memory. This is so exciting, it is nearly time for a Stupid Assembly. Good morning or good afternoon everybody and welcome to our Wednesday reading assembly. For each other we, and every day we, to improve we, together we will, every single Stukely day we focus on. Our Stukely motto is, our Stukely curriculum is. Our Stukely plan for home learning is four words that make the magic happen. Yes, they do. Uh, let's not muck about today. We're straight back on George's Marvellous Medicine. Before that, a quick author challenge. We haven't done this for a long, long time. So a bit of retrieval going on there, a bit of bringing back information from your long term into your working memory. Here's the question, here's the plan. I want you to pause the video, and as a class, I want you to write, um, no, I want you to, no, 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 how can we do this? As a class, I want you to think of as many authors as you can. Teacher or adult, you're gonna write them all down, you're gonna make a list. So children, think of as many authors as you can, make a list in class, and when I come round today, I look forward to seeing how you've done. Pause the video, off you go. How many did you get? I hope you put Riley Franklin on there after his debut book and his dad, but I hope you got him on there. Anyway, George's Marvellous Medicine, it's time. Um, before I start though, big shout out to Mr. Jones. He was sorting out some playtime and lunchtime top trump cards and he found some Roald Dahl top trump cards and he's found George Cranky. This is George from George's Marvellous Medicine. It says here, is a little boy who hates his horrible grandma so much that he concocts a marvellous medicine to cure her bad temper. Things don't work out exactly as George expects and the medicine has some strange side effects. So I'm gonna use that as my bookmark, okay? Anyway, George is living with his family, his grandma's there, his family have gone out, he's with his grandma, she's horrible to him, she bullies him, she says get my medicine, he cooks up this incredible medicine. Yeah, I know what you're gonna say. Have you still got it in your garage? Yes, I have. Hang on a sec. Still got a bit of a honk. Oh, man, that... Oh, it's actually a bit more liquidy than it was last week. That really, I ne I didn't think it, I didn't think it, I'll tell you one thing, that spoon has definitely changed, definitely changed colour. Anyway, that sponge is still in there. Right, anyway, so, George mixes up the medicine. Oh. George mixes up the medicine. And we finished last week as he was just about to give it to his grandma. Here's the bit we got to. As George removed the cork and began very slowly to pour the thick brown stuff into the spoon, he couldn't help thinking back upon all the mad and marvellous things that had gone into the making of this crazy stuff. The shaving soap, the hair remover, the dandruff cure, the automatic washing machine powder, the flea powder for dogs, the shoe polish, the black pepper, the horseradish sauce, and all the rest of them. Not to mention the powerful animal pills and the powders and the liquids and the brown paint. Open your mouth wide, Grandma, he said, and I'll pop it in. The old hag opened her small wrinkled mouth. 
showing disgusting pale brown teeth. Here we go, George cried out. Swallow it down. He pushed the spoon well into her mouth and tipped the mixture back down her throat. Then he stepped back to watch the result. It was worth watching. Grandma yelled, <coughs> and her whole body shot up whoosh, into the air. It was exactly as though someone had pushed an electric wire through the underneath of her chair and switched on the current. Up she went, whoosh, like a jack in the box, and she didn't come down. She stayed there, suspended in midair, about two feet up, still in a sitting position, but rigid now, frozen, quivering, the eyes bulging, the hair standing up on end. Is, 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 is something wrong, Grandma? George asked her politely. Are you okay? Suspended up there in space, the old girl couldn't speak. The shock that George's marvellous mixture had given her must have been tremendous. You'd have thought she'd swallowed a red hot poker the way she took off from that chair. Then she came down again with a plop back into her seat. Call the fire brigade, she shouted suddenly. My stomach's on fire, George. It's, it's just the medicine, Grandma, George said. It's good, strong medicine. Fire! The old woman yelled. Fire! In the basement! Get a bucket! Man the hoses! Do something, George! Quick! Cool it, Grandma, George said. But he got a bit of a shock when he saw the smoke pouring out of her mouth and out of her nostrils. Clouds of black smoke started puffing around the room. By golly, you, you really are on fire, George said. Of course I'm on fire, she yelled. I'm going to be burned to a crisp. I'll be fried to a frizzle. I'll be boiled like a beetroot. George ran into the kitchen and came back with a jug of water. Oh, oh, open your mouth, Grandma, he cried. He could hardly see her for all the smoke, but he managed to pour half a jugful down her throat. A sizzling sound. The kind you get if you hold a hot frying pan under a cold tap came up from deep down in Grandma's stomach. The old hag bucked and shied and snorted. She gasped and gurgled. That didn't sound good, did it? Oh, man. Spouts of water came shooting out of her and the smoke cleared away. The fire's out! The said George proudly. You'll be okay now, Grandma. Okay, she yelled. Who's okay? There's jacky jumpers in my tummy. There's squigglers in my belly. There's bangers in my bottom. She began bouncing up and down in the chair. Quite obviously, she was not very comfortable. You'll find it's doing you a lot of good, that medicine, Grandma, said George. Good, she screamed. Doing me good? It's killing me. Then she began to bulge and bulge. She was swelling. She was puffing up all over. Someone was pumping her up. <laughs> That's how it looked. Was she going to explode? Her face was turning from purple to green. But wait, <laughs> she had a puncture somewhere. George could hear the hiss of escaping air. She stopped swelling. She was going down. She was slowly getting thinner again, shrinking back and back slowly to her shrivelly old self. <laughs> How's things, Grandma? George said. No answer. Then a funny thing happened. Grandma's body gave a sudden sharp twist and a sudden sharp jerk and she flipped herself clean out of the chair and landed neatly on her two feet on the carpet. That's terrific, Grandma! George cried. You haven't stood up like that for years. Look at you. You're standing up all on your own and you're not even using a stick. Grandma didn't even hear him. The frozen pop-eyed look was back again with her now. She was miles away in another world. Marvellous medicine, George told himself. He found it fascinating to stand there, watching what it was doing to the old hag. What next, he wondered. He was soon to find out. Suddenly she began to grow. It was quite slow at first, just a very gradual inching upwards, 
up, 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 inch by inch, getting taller and taller, about an inch every few seconds. And in the beginning, George didn't notice it. But when she passed the five foot six mark and she was going up to six feet tall, George gave a jump and shouted, hey, hey, Grandma, you're, gro you're growing, you're, you're going up. Hang on, Grandma, you better stop or you'll hit the ceiling. But Grandma didn't stop. It was a truly fantastic sight. This ancient, scrawny old woman getting taller and taller, longer and longer, thinner and thinner, as though she were a piece of elastic being pulled upwards by invisible hands. I love that. When the top of her head actually touched the ceiling, George thought she was bound to stop. But she didn't. There was a sort of scrunching noise and bits of plaster and cement came raining down. Hadn't you better stop, Grandma? George said. Daddy's just had this whole room repainted. But there was no stopping her now. Soon her head and shoulders had completely disappeared through the ceiling and she was still going. George dashed, dashed upstairs to his own bedroom and there she was, coming up through the floor like a mushroom. Whoopee! She shouted finding her voice at last. Hallelujah! Here I come! Steady on, Grandma, George said. With a hey noddy no and up we go! She shouted, watch me grow, George! This is my room, George said. Look at the mess you're making. Oh, terrific medicine, she cried. Give me some more! She's dotty as a donut, thought George. Come on, boy, give me some more, she yelled. Dish it out, I'm slamming down. George was still holding the medicine bottle in one hand. Oh well, he thought, why not? He pulled out a second dose and popped it in her mouth. Owie! she screamed and up she went again and again. Her feet were still on the floor downstairs, but her head was going through the ceiling of the bedroom. I'm on my way now, boy, she called down to George. Just watch me go. That's the attic above you, Grandma, George called out. I'd keep out of there, it's full of bugs and bogles. Crush! The old girl's head went through the ceiling as though it were butter. George stood in his bedroom, gazing at the shambles. There was a big hole in the floor and a big hole in the ceiling. And sticking up between it was the middle part of Grandma. I'm still going, came the old screechy voice from up above. Give me another dose, my boy, and let's go through the roof. No, Grandma, no, George called back. You're busting up the whole house. To heck with the house, she shouted. I want some fresh air. I haven't been outside for 20 years. By golly, she's going to go through the roof, George told himself. He ran downstairs. He rushed out of the back door into the yard. It would be simply awful, he thought, if she bashed up the roof as well. His father would be furious and George would get the blame. He had made the medicine. He had given her too much. Don't come through the roof, Grandma, he prayed. Please, don't come through the roof. And we're going to stop there. I know you want to keep going, but I'm going to use my George Cranky Top Trump card. I'm going to pop it in there. Next chapter next week is called The Brown Hen. Oh, <laughs> love that. Okay. I've got another apology to make about Cheer Boo Song or Silence. Yes, uh, well, I was going to record Cheer Boo Song or Silence. I was late again. Went into the hall. Slimming World were in there. I can't go and record Cheer Boo Song or Silence while we've got a letting in the hall. It's not going to work. So I'm going to play you. I'm going to show you a Cheer Boo Song or Silence from last year. Now remember, last week we saw the first ever CB SOS with Mr. Smith. Bit awkward, wasn't it? Because it was the first one, he came out and we both stood there and then the music started. Bit awkward, they got better, they're getting better. Anyway, here is a Cheer Boo Song of Silence from last year that you've seen before but probably forgotten about. Here we go. Will they get a cheer, or will they get a boo? With either one there must not be violence. They may well get a song, but it will not last that long. We really hope they do not get silence. We're going to start off with everybody's favourite feature, cheer, boo, song or silence. Behind that curtain, Mrs Stevens is waiting. 
Her family are watching at home and they're very excited. Is she gonna get a cheer, a boo, a song or silence? Talk about it at home, talk about it in the classroom. What's it gonna be? We've had quite a few cheers lately. Right, here we go, let's get started. Out you come, Mrs. Stevens! I always feel awful. <laughs> Stop laughing. I always feel dreadful, but it is what it is. You pick the card, you follow it through. Let's get the book out. Will they get a cheer or will they get a boo? With either one there must not be violence. They may well get a song, but it will not last that long. We really hope they do not get silence. Always great to watch nostalgic video. Nostalgic means things that made you happy in the past. That's, I think that's what nostalgic means. Historic things, old things that make you happy, warm your heart. And I love seeing cheer, boo, song or silence from last year. Right, let's finish with shout outs and miss time. Happy birthday, Oscar G in year five. Have a great day, Oscar. Enjoy the day with your friends. Hopefully the sun's shining and you can uh, celebrate accordingly. Um, we've got three Accelerated Reader Millionaires. Yes, we do. I think this year's a record year for millionaires. I need to check with Mrs. Peak and the rest of the teachers, but I think this could be a record year. Gabriche in year five. You are an AR millionaire. Over a million words read this year. Jacob H in year four. You, my friend, are a millionaire. 1,040,598 words. Luke JK, year four. You are a millionaire. I love, love hearing about children that are reading lots at home and enjoying it. And when you hit a million words, that means you've been quizzing like crazy readers. So well done, all of you. Also, Edward in year four has just snuck through his classic reader as well. Brilliant, brilliant celebrations. Um, lots of you I know haven't done a quiz since Easter. And that's because you're reading big books. Get those quizzes done so we can move on and get more books in. Well done, everyone. Right. Most important 60 seconds. Oh, did you just hear that big? Let's do that again, shall we? This book is, look how big this book is. It's incredible. <laughs> Here we go. The most important 60 seconds are coming up now. The most important 60 seconds are coming up now. Oh, yes. Okay, you might not think this is a really important 60 seconds, but I tell you it is. We don't have a huge amount of money at Stukeley Meadows Primary School. We have some money to buy nice things. We don't have a huge amount. One thing we've had to buy a lot of in the last year is paper towels. Because we've been washing our hands more and trying to be more COVID secure, pop out, all that kind of stuff, we've bought a lot more paper towels. When you wash your hands, in class, outside, Wherever, when you wash your hands, you only need to take one paper towel. Just take one and dry your hands. Sometimes you pick one up and it's got another one stuck to it. You just need one, dry your hands. Yesterday, Mrs. Cooper was tidying out the bins and somebody had taken loads of paper towels, brushed their hands on them and chucked them in the bin. Look how many towels somebody had taken. Some very selfish person had taken all of those paper towels, just grabbed them, done that, put it in. If more people do that, it's gonna cost us a lot of money. Please, please respect the rule, which is pop out, wash your hands, one paper towel to dry them. You do not need more. If you see somebody wasting paper towels, please tell an adult, because we need to do some work on respect and being kind to each other. Have a great day.